out. I am. And we started with the Old Testament. So this is what we talked about in the Old Testament, the different names for God. Yahweh is God's name. What does Yahweh mean? I am. It means I am. So we see God saying, I am who I am. Very first time in Exodus, he says, I am who I am. And he's, who is he talking to? Moses. So he's explaining this to Moses. And Moses says, okay, fine. I'm going to go for you. Who shall I tell them sent me? And God says, I am sent you. If you see the word L-O-R-D, capital L-O-R-D in all caps, In your Bible, that is the name Yahweh, or what's another name? <coughs> Jehovah, which is the same name. <laughs> so we see throughout the Bible we have different names. Yahweh the Creator, Yahweh the take, take Caretaker, Yahweh Rapha the Healer, Yahweh Nisi the Banner, Yahweh Mkadesh the Sanctifier, Yahweh Shalom, God of Peace, Yahweh Sabaoth, God of Hosts, Yahweh Ra'ah, the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. That's the name of God there. Yahweh Ra'ah, the shepherd. Yahweh Sikenut, the righteous. Yahweh Shama. I am there. Ezekiel. Now that's the Old Testament. So God, we know we know that God was in the Old Testament. So what are the names of God in the New Testament? Jesus himself started using the same sort of language when he said I am various things. I am the bread of life. I am the light. Before Abraham was, I am. I am the gate. I am the shepherd. And two weeks ago, I am the resurrection and the life. Who is this? Who is this? This is Lazarus. Good. So Jesus says, I am. The same words. He says, I am. I am the Lord. I am the ruler. I am God. We'll see that more today than ever before. We'll see that today. Right, today we're going to look at chapter 14. Let me get to chapter 14. So we talked about Lazarus rising in chapter 11. Everybody thought that was wonderful. The Jews were astounded to see this happen. 
All the people were happy, right? No, not all of them. Some were not happy. Who was not happy? The Pharisees and the religious leaders. And some of the Jews said, Did you see what happened over there? And Jesus raised that guy from the dead, Lazarus. He was dead. And then I saw him come out of that tomb wrapped in grave clothes. And the Pharisees said, Really? Oh boy, what did they do? They got angry, but more than that, they felt threatened that Jesus was going to take over. And then where would they be? I'm a religious leader. If Jesus takes over and everybody starts flocking to him, what's going to happen to me? So they started trying to figure out how to get rid of him. Kill him or whatever they had to do. Next chapter, chapter 12, was Palm Sunday. What is Palm Sunday? No. When is it? When did it happen? When did it happen? Before the beginning of Passover, about the middle of the week. It was on it was on Sunday one week before Easter. That's when we celebrate it. It's the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a borrowed colt. And what did the people do? They honored him as king and shouted Hosanna. And they put their clothes in, on, on the ground so that Jesus could walk over them. He saw Jerusalem and he wept. Jesus wept for the people of Jerusalem because he knew that their time was drawing near and that chaos was coming. So we see Jesus in 13, chapter 13 just before his death, when they go into the upper room. And he's preparing himself for Passover. And then Jesus gives them the bread and they drink the wine. He says, this is my body, which is broken for you. This cup is my blood. This is the Last Supper. And while they are in the upper room, what happens? Jesus says, one of you will betray me. And all the disciples do what? They start looking at each other and saying, Lord, is it me? Is it me? And Jesus says, one of you who dips the bread with me is the one who will betray me. And that was Judas. So he Jesus knew that, and Judas stood up, and Jesus said, whatever you're going to do, do it quickly. So Judas left, and then Jesus started talking with the disciples after Judas left. In John chapter 13, very soon after Judas leaves, Jesus starts to talk to them. And he says in John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. Last week, Paul used this to preach from, right? Do you remember what Paul used last week? What verse Paul Chang used? What did it say? Without looking. Without looking. How will they know that you are my disciples. 
if ye love one another. If you love one another, then they'll know that you are my disciples. All right, so Jesus is ready. He's ready to go. And what does Peter say? Oh, wait. Let's talk about where we are. This is Israel of Jesus' time. This is Israel. Jesus grew up here in Nazareth. And he traveled back and forth between Nazareth and Jerusalem, or Galilee, the northern part of Israel, and specifically the town of Nazareth. Nazareth. And then Bethany is down here. And Jesus spent a lot of time here in Bethany, and also in Galilee, and he went back and forth. So where are we now? For today's sermon, we're in Jerusalem, and specifically in the upper room, probably Peter's house or Peter's friend's house, Peter's mother's house, maybe. We don't know for sure. And Peter says, Lord, Whither goest thou? And Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterward. <coughs> Afterwards. Peter said unto him, Lord, why can't I why can I follow why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. And Jesus answered him, Be honest. Will thou lay down, lay down my life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, The cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. That was bothering me. So, we know the story. Peter says, I'm going all the way with you. So, this happened when they were still in the upper room. Jesus then continues to speak, and then we get to John chapter 14. If you look in your Bibles, John 14, 15, and 16, and I think 17 too. Yeah, all the way through are all red, if you have red letters that show Jesus speaking. 14, 15, 16, and 17 are all red, all the way through. Is this one complete speech? Some of it was in the upper room in chapter 14, and then chapter 15, 16, and 17 are when they're on the road to the garden. So we'll talk about that next week. So as Jesus is in the upper room in chapter 14, he starts to explain. So he's talking to his disciples gathered there. Don't worry. Do not let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Oh, of course we do. All Jews believe in God. You believe in God. Believe also in me. What did you say? Oh, no, they're in the upper room with just the disciples. In my father's house are many mansions. Thank <laughs> you. 
rooms. There are different translations they have different, that have different words. Some say apartments. Some say rooms. Some say fancy places. When we think of the word mansion, we think of a, a big house. But the translator in the 1600s didn't mean that. He meant something added on to the main house. The addition was called a mansion back in the 1600s. It didn't necessarily mean a fancy house. You know, don't think when you get there you're going to have your own fancy house. So if you get there before I do, you can text me and send me a picture of your mansion, okay? But the point is, Jesus says, I have rooms in my Father's house for you. Well, that's good. There's room in heaven for me. Sounds good. If it were not so... I would have told you. So it's true. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Now, hold on a minute before we move on. I want to expand on this a little bit more. <coughs> Where's Jesus going to prepare a place for them? He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Where? In heaven. How is Jesus going to prepare this place for them? Now, I've seen, and I laughed sometimes a little bit, I've seen people draw pictures of Jesus. And this verse is quoted, I go to prepare a place for you. And they show Jesus with a hammer in his hand, that he's going into heaven to start building a house for, for us in heaven. Do you think Jesus is going to do that? No. Jesus is not going to be doing carpentry in heaven. Jesus is not going to be hard at work adding more rooms onto the mansion. So how is Jesus going to do this? How is he going to prepare a place for us? No, not yet, but pretty soon. How? How? He's going to die. Jesus is going to die. I go to prepare a place for you. I'm going to make a way for you. Where? In heaven. How? Now. Okay, so I'm going, right? And when I come back, I'll take you with me. Where am I going? You know that. And you know how I'm going. You know the way. You know where I'm going, and you know the way. Do you agree? Where? He's going to heaven. How? Through Jesus' sal salvation. Now, Thomas didn't understand. Not doubting Thomas. No, he didn't doubt. He's not doubting here. Thomas isn't doubting here. That was later. Right here, he's not. There's no doubt here. He just doesn't understand. And I'm happy he doesn't understand because he's willing to ask. 
you know, Peter's sitting over here, probably still thinking about Jesus saying that he's going to deny him three times. I don't know. I'm just, I wasn't there, but Peter's probably upset. I just imagine myself. That was my imagination. But Thomas, it's usually Peter who speaks up. But here Peter's sitting over here sulking, and Thomas is willing to speak up. And Thomas says, No. We don't. We don't know. You said you know where we're going, where you're going, and we know the way. We don't know. Thomas says to him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? We have no idea where you're going or which way you're going. And if you went out tomorrow and I met you at my favorite restaurant, okay? You know the way, right? You know where it is. You know how to get there. If you know me, then you know that. I see a lot of people trying to guess. That's a good restaurant. QBF. It's a good restaurant. I d anyway, that's off the point. I, I just, oh, okay, Q39. On the plaza. Downtown there, but anyway. There's, there was a strange guy there who came up and said, I'm not from Kansas City, which is a barbecue place I should go to out of all this list. And I said, Q39, I'll tell you, there's no question. And order the burnt ends. You'll thank me later. Oh, okay, thank you. Hope they had a good experience there. It is. Ex I told him it was expensive. He said, oh, that's okay. But back to the point. So Thomas says, well, you told me you're going, but we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Is it important to know where he's going? Yes. Is it important to know the way? Yes. It's important, and Thomas is asking the important questions. If Thomas doesn't ask... Then they don't. Then you don't have verses six and seven. So I'm happy we do verse six and seven. Jesus said unto him, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me." You should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. Now, wait a minute. No one has ever seen God. Ever. No one has ever seen the father. Moses saw God's back, and he had to hide until God passed by him. People have seen the power of God. People have seen the Holy Spirit come upon the temple. People have seen the angel of God, but they have never seen the Father, them, Father himself. Never. But Jesus says, you have seen the Father. Because you've seen me, Jesus. And Philip said, Now, jo Lord... 
show me the Father and I'll be satisfied. You say that we've seen the Father. I want to see him. I'm ready. Show me. You say, we've seen the Father. Show me. I'm ready. I'm ready. But Jesus said, Philip, how long have you been with me? And you don't know who I am? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. But you're still saying, show me the Father. You don't believe me? The Father is in me and I am in the Father. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very works sake. So what did Jesus do? Lots of miracles. And most importantly, what did he do just recently? He raised the dead back to life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. I give life. Who gives life? Only God. Jesus says, I give life. And that means, I am God. Oh, I'm getting hot. So now... Moses, not Moses, <laughs> Philip says, where's God? Jesus says, hello, it's me. Have you seen me? So now John chapter 14, verse 6 and 7 again. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Where I'm going, you know, and you know the way. Thomas says, no, we don't know. What is the way? So this is the claim that Jesus makes. He says, I am three things. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. So three different claims, three different meanings, all very powerful. So let's stop and think a minute. I am the way, what way? The best way? The way to heaven? What else? There are not multiple ways, there is just one. The way to heaven, right. I came up with four. Jesus is the way to heaven. Jesus is the way to the Father. Jesus is the way to salvation. Jesus is the way to the cross. All are important. You and I, when you and I die, we want to go to heaven, right? Why do we want to go to heaven? There's no more sin. We don't want to go to hell. We'll have new bodies, no pain, 
become hearing? George wants that so bad. We'll live in peace. No cancer. Double sight. <laughs> okay. Heaven is a wonderful place. Right? Heaven's a wonderful place, right? So we list all these reasons why we want to go to heaven. None of you said, I want to see God. We talked about physical things, about freedom from pain. And that's right. Heaven is good. Heaven is wonderful. Heaven is important. But to be there with the Father and have a relationship with God, I see. I, I saw Rodney say something about that. But the, that's the best thing. It's better than golden streets. It's better than a fancy mansion. It's better than having no pain. It's better than peace. It's better than all of those things is to have a relationship with God, to see the Father and be in His presence and live with God. That's the best thing of all. And the only way to receive that is through salvation. And the only way to salvation is through the cross. The place of suffering. It's not easy. It's not good. It's not pretty. It's not wonderful. It's bloody. It's ugly. It's disgusting. It's terrible. Suffering and death. But Jesus was willing to take that way for us for you and for me wow and Jesus said I'm going and you can't go with me yes I'm going to go with you all the way Peter said all the way <coughs> Jesus said no you're going to die but not with me You can't help me with this. Only I can do this. I'm the only one that can give you the way. And I'm happy that Peter didn't die with Jesus. If Peter had died with Jesus, the Catholic Church would be even more powerful than it is now. But Jesus... There was no honor in dying with Jesus. But instead, he was weeping at Jesus' death because he denied Jesus three times. I'm thankful that Jesus died alone for our sins. Jesus said, I am the way. Secondly, he said, I am the truth. What truth? The lying? The pure truth without sin? What I've taught so far is true? He's never broken his promise. So today, in today's world, I hear people say, that's my truth, or that's your truth. They think that truth is flexible. 
your truth may be different than my truth and that's fine the world thinks that right right now the world is saying well your truth can be different from mine and that's your truth it's not my truth my truth is different than yours Jesus said I am the truth there is only one there is not yours and mine there is a truth I am the truth the only one that means what is truth the one that is never wrong God's Word is truth nothing else everyone else you know you you have words I have words but they're not a hundred percent truthful there's always a little dishonesty but Jesus is the truth of God the truth of creation he's the truth of man he has the truth no matter what science invents <laughs> they find out life began 99 billion years ago where'd you come up with that we have evidence show me the evidence and they can't they can't and it's interesting that science wants one miracle what do they want they want the Big Bang they can't explain the Big Bang they try they've tried to test for it for 20 years they've been shooting had in the Hadron Collider in Europe and now they built another one just recently I don't know where it's supposed to be built pretty soon in, in Texas or someplace and it's already they're gonna have a new one and they're gonna start shooting electrons or whatever they shoot at each other to try to find out where life came from what? where it began so they're still looking for that and they found lots of good things have they found God that's what they're looking for they're calling it the God particle that's what they're looking for the God particle but they can't find it and they say well, it can happen any day now we're gonna find it soon we're still waiting Jesus is the life eternal Jesus is the life worth living Jesus is the life past death and many people are afraid to die they say "Ooh, I don't want to die when they're getting close to death in my family we've had a conversation about that the last few weeks with Kim being sick and explaining about cancer explaining to my kids what's going to happen cancer especially this type of cancer pancreatic cancer and I warn them to be prepared and I explain about death and now Kim has no cancer and that's wonderful but guess what Kim is still gonna die later on not now but she's still gonna die you and I can postpone death we can try to live healthy lives eat right no red meat exercise we can go vegan
We can do Adkins. We can do Whole 30. We can do South Beach. We can try our best to take care of ourselves, and we are still going to die. You can't escape death. Your body will die. Jesus said, I am the life. When your body dies, and Peter, you're going to die. I, Jesus, will die. And Jesus died. You know that. He didn't pass out. He wasn't in a coma. He didn't just black out for three days and then wake up. Jesus died. His body died. His heart stopped beating. You could have seen the flat line. He was dead. And then he lived again. And where did the power come from? Within himself. Because he himself was God. And Jesus says to his disciples, I'm trying to explain this, Lord. How can I explain it to them? How can I tell them this? Where I'm going, they'll go later, but I'll come back for them. And so he tried to explain it, and the disciples are still thinking about a kingdom. They're still thinking about him being the Messiah. And now he's talking about, they're talking about him defeating Rome. That's what they're thinking about. And Jesus, Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And hoping that they understand. They don't understand now, but after his death, they would understand. And I'm thankful that John wrote this down. If John hadn't written it down, we would be missing this. So now think about the opposite. What's the opposite of the way? Being lost. What's the opposite of the truth? The lie. What's the opposite of life? Death. Without Jesus... We're lost, we have no truth, and we're dead. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we've already talked about this. You know the Father. How do you know the Father? Through me. The Father wants to know you. God the Father knows me. I'm sure Peter was over here thinking, oh great, now another disappointment. I was disappointed in Jesus, now I have to be disappointed in God the Father too. So what about you? I can't emphasize this enough. I can't tell you enough. You need Jesus. There's no other way. There's no other truth. There's no other life. Now maybe you've heard people say out in the world, oh, I don't need Jesus. I'll just go to hell. I'll party in hell with my friends. I'd rather go party with my friends in hell than live in some fancy, fancy schmancy mansion. That's boring. I'll go have fun. 
you're going to regret that. You can live for yourself now on earth. You can enjoy yourself. But what's the result? Nothing except pain, heartache, suffering from now on to eternity. Accept Jesus today or regret it forever. There's no argument. Jesus says it. I believe it. There's nothing vague here. You don't have to ask, did Jesus really mean that? Sometimes I've been asked, is there another meaning here? But there is no other meaning. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And many people today say, well, there are lots of paths to God. Whatever path you find is your own truth. But it's not. There's only one supreme ruler of the universe. There's only one who creator who spoke creation into being. There's only one judge. And his name isn't Mark. I'm happy I'm not the judge of the universe. If I did, you'd all be dead. I'm happy I'm not the judge. There is one who loves you, who offers you the path. It's not an easy path, but it is the best path. It's the one, the, the way, the truth, and the life. Father, we thank you today for your word for your truth, for your way, and for your life. I thank you that I found the truth and the life in your way. And I'm happy that I remember as a child deciding that I would follow Jesus because you are the way. I thank you that I'm still on the way. Sometimes I go a little bit astray, but then I come back. No matter how far I go, you keep me on the path. Help me to stay on that path until the end. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.